views and broadcast group this station and staff, other advertisers or agencies. Here comes the, here comes the, here comes the, yeah, I don't really Yo, 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 what's going uh-huh. on? What's going on, family? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, man. I mean, the building seems like I ain't been here forever. Yeah, you ain't been here about 300 years. Oh, oh y'all got jokes. Y'all yeah. like, y'all By the way, Rico, Happy man. New Year. <laughs> <laughs> jokes, man. Y'all still, happy man. New Year. Ain't no issue with Yeah, that's right. Yeah, man, y'all. <laughs> yo, man, so we are in here in the building, man. I hope everybody's doing well, man. Um, I am back. Your boy, Moray Brown, is in here. Uh, it's been a minute, and um, I don't know, man. I feel like a stranger. Mm-hmm. I guess I feel like a stranger. Well, as long as you uh, are here to our laws, that's a commandment. You good. <laughs> we treat you as one. Yeah, as right. one of our own. <laughs> the prodigal son. Man. I mean, he, right. look, Rick, Rick was like, yo, man, you need the address? Yeah. Like, Send an Uber. You been gone, man. You need the address? You, you, can you, you know how to get here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So man, what's going on, everybody? What's going on? I see we got we got Deacon Phillip in the building. Hey, he is. Yeah, they done pulled me off the uh, practice squad. I was bagging <laughs> groceries <laughs> like Kurt Warner. They said, "Hey man, yes sir, we, we need the third stringer right fast." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So today, man, we're gonna definitely be getting into a subject of conversation uh, on today here on Boom Radio. We are definitely gonna be talking about a poverty mindset, Mm-mm. and uh, we want to kind of get into a conversation we were kind of talk about earlier. Uh, dealing with owning things and, and debt freedom and that's right. all that good stuff. So, um, Rick, what's going on, bro? Well, we can't even hear you on this. Can't, can't, can't even hear you. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. Can you hear me now? There you yeah, go. There you go. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dollar Tree Wi Fi back there. <laughs> you know how to go with Bro. Man, I'm just sitting around chilling, man, trying to make life out, man. Trying to stay safe, trying to stay healthy, and trying to stay alive, man. How how, how have you been, Moray Br- William Brown? <laughs> hey, man, look, last time I've been here, it just I, I I can't even remember what we talked about. What was the last show? I I know y'all be y'all been t- chopping it up, and and uh, I'm surprised that the station is still uh, looking good, and because you know I kind of have to keep you and Casey off each other. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but how y'all I, you know. Able to keep the station looking mighty <laughs> fine and clean here. Well, well you know, um, Moray Derek Siler was here. You yeah, know, you know, yeah. He, we he had was, El, we had Deacon, he's quiet. Elder 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 and, Everett and, and was here. Elder well. Johnson was in here, so mm-hmm. you know it was. It was some, some some that was able to stand in between us. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and keep the peace. May the Lord watch between thee and me. <laughs> What's up, Moray Siler? I see you now on, on on Facebook Live, man. What's going on, uh, Angelo? Shout out to him. What's going on? But uh, definitely call us, call in. The telephone number is 404-355-8699. We're going to be talking about a impoverished mindset, man. Um, I mean, I just think that, you know, we have to kind of change our way of thinking. We, we've been, hmm. should have changed our way of thinking about things. Um, and But with that, if we don't change the way we think, then we can't change the way our hands make decisions. Because mm-hmm. basically our hands do what our mind tell it, right? All right. Mm-hmm. So we have to try to figure out, like, um, the first thing we have to kind of get into is trying to figure out how do we get rid of, how do we get in the debt? Like, how, like what, what, is the, what is the leading issue that causes us to make these poor decisions, uh, Deacon Phillips? Well, some people are born into it. For right. Yeah. I, I, they right. Don't, they don't know nothing other than. Struggle. That's right. I had two phones in my name before I even turned 10. So, so when they, you know, mother or mother and father are already in debt and they're struggling and they have nobody to teach them how to come out of that, then that's what they know. 
Hmm. So that's now, you know, on the show, you know, I'm going to play a little devil advocate today, on, you know, as always, as an opposing view, you know. Um, so most people, there's some people out here who would say that that's an excuse. What you're I'm saying. not those people, though. I know. I'm just asking. <laughs> some people would say that what you're saying is an excuse to. Mm-hmm. Remain in having a impoverished mindset that mm-hmm. if you make good decisions, that you could come out of that situation mm-hmm. because America is providing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, means Uh-oh. of ways of getting out of this for some but, folks. But, but I want to ask, I want to ask our brother Rick, 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 thoughts on this, man. Like, you know, uh, is there some villainy? You heard what uh, Deacon Phillips said. Uh, what are your thoughts on 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 that situation? I absolutely agree with Deacon Phillips because, I mean, myself, I mean, I can't, I, I, coming out to PJs, um, even though you don't know you po, but once you hmm. g- get get up in in age, you start to realize that you didn't have, and then you went, and there is a lot of validity to what he said because you can see generations of generations of generations hmm. of family living in the project. Oh. So to me... There's a lot of validity to what he said, but there's validity to what you said also because it is a mindset. But how do you learn to get out of that mindset is mm-hmm. the biggest question because they don't teach you in school how to do it. Right. Mm. It, it's not a class in school to teach you financial literacy, to teach you how to get up out this thing. Um, yes, America provides you with everything you want to get up out of it, but if you don't know how to have the mindset yeah. to get up out of it, right. how do you do it? Mm. Right. Yeah, I, I think I think too that that you know it, it's definitely validity to what Deacon Phillips said, but also at, you know at the same time I think that um, people within the framework of of growing up, you know, um, I think that we have to get back to a situation where well I ain't gonna say get back, but I think we have to get to a situation where we kind of stop the bleeding, shall mm-hmm. I say, you know. And it starts with us, you know, educating ourselves. As you said, nobody, because growing up, you know, I didn't have, even though my parents, um, they worked really, really extremely hard and they got out of, they got out of the projects, right? And their goal was, hey, we want to own our own home. So the first home that they bought was like $20,000, you know, but they did everything possible. You know, we lived in the hood, like in Jacksonville, it's a, a it was a, a, a project on the on, on the east side near the stadium um, on that side. And it was called the Blodgett Homes. And that's where we grew up at. But my mom, her mindset was like, I'm not going to be living mm-hmm. in the projects. And she worked her behind off, fi- saved up the money enough to to be able to get out of that. But that where we moved to out of the projects into what what is called the West Side on Union Street, it was still it was better than the projects, mm-hmm, but not really but out the hood. It still was the dope. It was so many dope. It, the I Street was where the where the main dope dope houses was at, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like the Blodgett homes where it was mm-hmm. like impoverished, impoverished. Gotcha. So you yeah. had people in the hood in the neighborhood that they would work mm-hmm. versus the people in the projects. Most of them was at home, you know, getting yeah. assistance stuff like that. Yeah. But my mom started building this mindset See? around the house. She was like, her goal was after that was to work hard. She worked hard, got a job at one at at um at a nice re- you know uh, uh, corporate company. Stayed there for um, almost almost thirty years. Thirty, I think she stayed a little over thirty years. Mm. But her mindset was her last uh, fifteen years on the job was I want to move to the west side, get off the northwest side. She wanted to move in a community where there was no black people. We was the first black people mm. to move in that community. Mm. Now, this community, my my uh, my kindergarten teacher lived across the street from where we bought the house. Now, they moved out of the neighborhood because her husband, <laughs> you know, come to find out, you know, he was a racist. Wow. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But she was the nicest lady in the world, but they moved out. So my the my I'm, all I'm saying is that even whatever goals I think we have to have goals to start out. Even though mm. America does have, you know, is there privileges to being white in America, right. right? There's white privilege, 
But I also believe that we can also work hard to try to give our children. And now, even though we lived in a nice neighborhood like that, it still wasn't instilled in me as a kid to say, okay, when you become an adult, my parents didn't sit me down and say, teach me about, uh, um, you know, loans and, and IRAs yeah, and stuff like that, 401ks, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. none of that. See. And they didn't teach me any of that. It wasn't until I got out of the house and became an adult. I wish my mom had did me like like a lot of my white counterparts when they got married to their wives. Mm-hmm. They moms let them daddy told them y'all come back home and stay here no, sir. and save your money versus <laughs> us. And I'm going to turn it over to y'all. But versus us, as soon as you turn 18, uh, not 18, your senior year of high school, like what you going to do? What you going to yeah. do? What you going to do? What you going to mm-hmm. do? What you going to do? What you going to do? And they bug you all the way through the year. And then if you don't have something you're doing by the time of graduation, you got a month to get out of the house at 18. You know what I'm saying? So I turn it over to y'all. Then we're going to go from that. But let me get a, the number to the callers. 404-355-8699. Please call in and share your thoughts about what we're talking about, poverty mindset. Can we come out of that? Can we change? Can we uh, plan and prepare and uh, to help you know uh, help our children in the future, give them a different mindset? Go ahead, Ben Skates. Right, right, I'm going to put the light on for a quick minute. Bible says that. My people perish for lack of knowledge. We didn't know. We weren't taught. Wasn't taught principles of money, how to handle money, how to even write a check, how to balance a checkbook, because mom and them didn't really have a bank account. They didn't have 401ks. They barely had jobs. What am I saying? When they were in the projects, that project mentality sometimes get passed down to the children and to the other generations because you take on that complacent mentality where you don't want to do no better because somebody else is already doing for me. Why should I go out and try to get a job when I got somebody that's paying me that's taking care of bills? Now, there's a lot of different other variables that come into play why people still have that poverty mindset. Some people fall into adult parenthood at a young, at a young age, 14, 15 years having babies. You see what I'm saying? A lot of other act, people get on drugs. People getting it's, it's so many different variables that cause us to keep that mindset. But the main one is not being taught. You mentioned goals. I didn't have no goals. We wasn't taught to have goals. We, you know what I'm saying? We what we wasn't taught that you just you know go to school to go get a job. Not necessarily you go to school to try to get a career. No, you go get a job. Mm-hmm. Under, not understanding, but you still a slave even on that job because you you can only go for it. Go go as far as the 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 owner or the manager of that company going to allow you to go. We wasn't taught to go out and start. Ha- you know how you look at TV and you see other nations and say, "Hey, mm-hmm. I'm gonna show you how to be a, a business person." We're gonna go and take this same Kool Aid that Big Mama then was selling freezer cup. Well, why we didn't teach our kids how to start their own freezer cup business or eliminate stand at that age? And then your mindset. Get at that age, I'm gonna I'm I'm ha- start having my own. So by the time you get out the projects, it's it's like now I'm 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 gonna do me now, right? And right. you don't you don't think about the next generation that's gonna come behind you. Right. So it, it, it's it's not being taught, and we can't expect somebody else to teach us how yeah. to how to overstand or overcome uh, our situations because some of these things were designed to keep us in that place. I want to ask uh, Rick. And, and then I want to ask Deacon Phillip a question. I want to, first of all, I want to ask Rick, um, how did Black Wall Street get to the level that it got? And then after that, I want to ask uh, you to kind of talk about uh, what, from your perspective, what's the difference between a career and a job? All right. So, Rick, Rick, what, how did Black Wall Street get to where was that? Because I know it it it, it shows that you know throughout history in America, Africans in America. We've seen that many of them had wealthy communities. It's not just Black Wall Street. There were mm-hmm. others, mm-hmm. you know, that had wealthy communities, that had um, the mindset to be able to build their own communities. Because most of the black communities during that time in 1800s and things like that, they were built by hand Literally. by black people. Mm-hmm. So what, what, how, how, how did Wall Street get to that? Because they had to have some form of education and mindset to build that community to what it was? Trust. Mm. Uh I mean, understanding, having a plan, Mm 
mm-hmm. putting a plan in action, then teaching. Right, right. Because, like you say, we can't build nothing if we don't trust each other. Mm-hmm. Wow. If we don't have a first, have a plan. Right. First, no. First, we have to set aside our differences. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> oh yeah. boy. We have to be yeah. able to walk into a place and put down out our titles and and, and and put down our differences and be able to come up with a a viable plan that everybody can work. We have to. Everybody have to be able to work this plan and to see the progress. Because you're going to have somebody that's going to get discouraged. Mm -hmm. But when you get discouraged, I got to be able to come in. Somebody got to be able to come in. Look here, brother. This is the plan. Keep the vision of the plan. Mm -hmm. And then we have to see progress in the plan. Right. You know, no plan, no, 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 nothing happens without sacrifice. There's going to be yes, some see, sacrifice. Yeah. Boy, that boy talking good today, yeah. ain't he? Everybody <laughs> have to know that there's going to be some sacrifice. Yeah. It's going to be some losses. Right, right. Because you can't build nothing without some losses, without a steady foundation. You got to have a foundation. And you also got to teach the youth because to keep it going. Yeah. We have, I mean, and this is how... Black Wall Street, um, Rosewood. Mm-hmm. This is how these communities was built. Right. Auburn Avenue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. This okay. is how these communities was were built. Yeah. Because, and we had to depend on each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We had to depend on each other. We had to trust. I had to trust that I could come to you. I can come to you. Hey, bro, I, bro. Mm-hmm. Things a little hard over here right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Is there something? Is, is can I come over here and, 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 and help you so I can make sure? Yes, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. when you down, brother, yes, come on. We 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 have we to. We all down. Yeah, we yeah. all down. Mm-hmm. So we have to be able to. We have to be able to get a plan. We we'll set aside our differences. Come up with a plan. Come up with a vision. And and and, and come up with education about it because we used to have a program on here called Rich Black Girl. Dr. Devante Moore, hmm. she is a beast. Mm. And one thing she used to holler about, the fear of money. We have a fear of money. Yeah. Mm. All we want to do is be able to get that money, be able to try to pay it. these bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 or try to make sure we can pay these bills, but we don't sit down and learn how, how money can work for right. us. And then we don't teach our kids. Mm-hmm. So I, I know some white folks be like, look here, man. Everybody come in here and let's see where these bills going. Yeah. So y'all can get an understanding of what's going on in the house. That's right, right. right. Mm-hmm. We don't, right. we didn't, we didn't have an understanding of what was going on in the house. We just know that mom and daddy then went out, <laughs> and you flicked the lights. They came, and on. they came on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What made these lights come on? Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it somebody got to take some money down out of them folks. Yeah. But you gonna hit that light and it ain't gonna come on. That's right. But right. yeah. So that to me is it. That's that's dope, man. What. That's good. Talk That's about good. that, brother uh, Deacon Phillip. The, the difference, difference between a job is and there a, career. a difference between a job oh. and a career? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> like how how do you how do you make the decision on if this is a career? Do you know going in like okay, or do you, once you get in you like okay I'm gonna make this a career? How, or can it work either way? Like you don't know. I believe it know. can work either way, um, but I believe a job is something that somebody can do without any education Mm -hmm. like um you know um a lot of us when we first got into the workforce uh we like myself i got a job at mcdonald's working on fries and hamburgers right that's when the big bucks start rolling in (laughs) (laughs) crazy like that was a job (laughs) (laughs) okay all right i thought i was doing my thing in 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 landscape you know you can push a lawnmower or something like that that's a that's a job because you don't need an education to do that. Now, a career, I feel, is something that you're led to do, you're called to do, and you love what you're doing. But yeah. even if you start off on the ground floor, you can only go so high without having an education. Now, the education don't always have to be formal education. Somebody uh, that maybe have been formally educated can school you in business and things right. like that. Like if you have your own business, you got to know how to conduct business. Right. That's right. You know, you got to know right. how to have right. customer service, how to manage, you know, those books and things like that, you know. So uh, the job, anybody can have a job, you okay. know, just, just to make some money. But a career, yeah, you got to have some education behind that and, and love to do what you're doing. Hmm. Awesome, awesome. Caller, we got a caller calling in. What's your name and where you're calling from? 
Atlanta. This is Sister Huey. How y'all doing? Hey, How you Sister doing? Huey. Sister what's Huey. going on? What's up, Dad, darling? <laughs> hey, sweetheart. <laughs> well, just to answer the question, um, I agree that it's a mindset and that some people stay in progress because they have to. There are no other choices. And it, it don't take long to figure out what your choices are or how far you can go. And then I think people give in to the noise, like um, Brother Rick mentioned the projects and a couple of you mentioned the projects. Yeah, the projects were designed to keep us all in one location mm-hmm. together, impoverished together. Right. And it has worked for years and years and years. But you've also seen that there has been one that will come up and their child excels, their child will go on to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, because that person made a decision. They decided to quiet the noise of everything else around them saying, you can't, you can't, you can't. And they decided, we're going to do something about this. Right. And then you have to also think about how um, our communities, when we did see people raising up, other people would band together and promote certain children or what have you. It, it ain't fair. Right. A lot of times we know favor is not fair. But that one who will walk the line and that one who will go far, tend to do that. Mm. And there's somebody back, and then we, we have to look at, you know, we'll go back to the black church. They raised money. They went to the NAACP. They went to all these other things that helped. And then, you know, along with that quieting of the noise, in the process, you get people, when you try to come up, they may say, you a sell out. Mm. So you're giving mm-hmm. into the noise again, and you yeah. decide you're going to stay down because somebody else said you can't get up. And I think about, too, that Black Wall Street. One of the reasons it worked together because they made a decision to work together. Yeah. I got the dry cleaner. You got the grocery. I got the butcher. You got the bus driver. Mm-hmm. You got the uh, the gas station. You know what I mean? Right. They made a decision to decide that this, this one would do this particular job. Everybody had a role. That's how it worked. Why and not? they, were, you know, made millions. And my last one is this. When it comes to being impoverished, and one way to come out, change the mindset, and you have to change your walk. Look at how Malcolm X. I don't necessarily agree with everything they do, but the reason that whole nation began to clean up men and do all this, they had to change their image to Mm, begin to look like somebody you would want to be around, listen to, understand. You hear what I'm saying? Right, right. That's all I gotta say. Hey, thanks for calling in, sis. Let me say this right quick before we take this next call. See, my wife made a good point, and this is not about me, y'all. So don't know, don't bother to get it get it twisted. Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> but I made it. I made it a point, and I make it a point when I see the young men selling waters. When I pull up to the gas, when I pull up, I make it a point to tell them, "Hey, young man, listen, I'm not gonna buy no water from you today because your pants are down and you don't have no shirt on." The way you're presenting yourself is, is not making mm-hmm. me want to buy, but I'm going to bless you with this dollar for water. I'm not going right. to I'm not going to take the water. You will sell more water if you pull your pants up, tuck your shirt in and look like you're out here trying to be businessman like yeah. and other than mm-hmm. other than you trying to stand out here and hustle. It makes mm-hmm. a difference. Right. It, right, right. it right. makes Mindset. a difference. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Caller, mm-hmm. caller, what's your name? Calling in. Where you calling from? Hey, this is Eric. That's Eric. I knew he was. I knew I was waiting on that call. Which you waiting Eric? on this call? Yeah, brother Eric. You know I'll be waiting on your phone call. <laughs> like, I knew you was gonna call. This is in your lane, baby. <laughs> so it is, man. This is this is something that I this is something that I teach. Yes, sir. In my volunteer project. So um awesome. here's some cold here's some cold facts so that people know that this is not a black thing. From the Pew Research Institute, which is a very reputable source by the way, mm-hmm. um people making between nineteen and thirty five thousand dollars in this country, that's across the board, black, white, yellow, whatever. Only nineteen percent are invested in the market, in the stock market. Mm. And of that nineteen percent, most of them are invested in directly through some type of four oh one K that is managed through their job. So it ain't a black thing. Okay? Right, right. And then when you go up thirty five thousand to fifty three thousand, it only goes up to forty four percent which is still the same thing. Most of that money is invested for them. They're not paying attention to it. It's through a 401k or something like that through their right. job. So how to um, fix it? We're talking about our folks, but be clear, this ain't our folks' primary problem. The, um, 
the Christ, the Christ, the recession that was caused in '08 was caused because of very poor financial efficiency across the board. A lot of people were placing their wealth in what they assumed to be the value of their house. Right, right. And that's if somebody's going to buy it for that much. But yeah. if they ain't going to buy it for that much, then you ain't got it. True wealth is what you actually have in possession. Mm. And what we should be teaching in our community, amongst other communities as well, is financial efficiency. And it's not an issue of whether you have it or not. It's whether you had an ambition to teach it. It's free to teach it. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot to know that much about it. Uh, a simple a simple concept is engraved in the front of the IRS building, the Internal Revenue Service building in Washington, D.C. Taxes are what we pay for civilized society. Mm-hmm. Every 14-year-old in the country with a work permit should know that phrase and know what it means. Mm, right. And that, that's a that's an easy start, although you should have started long before then, but that's an easy start. You know, you got a work permit. You have to have some financial responsibility and efficiency, and you have to contribute to the tax base because taxes are what we pay for a civilized for a civilized society. And um, I hear I'm with you, man. I know my parents didn't teach me um, about IRAs and stocks and things like that when I was coming when I was going through the public schools, but I learned it without them, right? Because right. I knew I knew where to go to get the information for free, and I learned how to invest at an early age. The banks are t- you can go to most local banks in in a, ma- in a major city, and if you say I want to learn how to invest, they'll they'll talk to you for free as long as you got some money to do it. Mm. Yeah, mm. hey, That's hey bro- word. brother, brother Eric, you, you here in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Not today. No, I'm just saying. Wednesday. You, you, you here? Period. Like you live here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we early should- voting starts October 12th. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I, I was asking because I think that uh, I know you, you, uh, Minister Casey, are familiar with you or whatnot. I think it'd be good to have him up here. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying we could just actually yeah, just awesome. just yeah. let him just. You hey, know, man. what I'm saying he ain't let gonna let you see your face, huh? Yeah, he ain't he gonna, gonna let you see his face. Yeah, hey, Pastor Houseway have been trying to get him. Hey, in so wait a minute. So you've been, been, been trying to get him in. I've been hearing this voice. I've been hearing this voice for at least ten years. You telling me if you wouldn't even you got all this wisdom and you won't even come up to the come up to the show. I've been in the studio before. You ain't going to come up here and we invite you? I might, but I just don't come. I got stuff to do just like y'all. That's oh, Lord, man. <laughs> I mean, if you really think, if you really, I know you guys hear my voice a lot. Yeah. I know that. But if you really think relative to how much time is available that you could be hearing my voice, then you realize that, well, yeah, we hear him a lot, but he ain't really he ain't really around like that much. No, you no. Know? Nah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I mean, because... This is what we're tra- this is what we're trying to we have when we have these conversations. I'm not saying necessarily that I gotta put you on a camera or nothing yeah. like that, but I'm just saying to be able to come in because you're on the phone, we can't allot the time because other callers are calling in and things like that. That's what I'm saying to be able to come up here and share what you're sharing. I think it's valuable only if you come up here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we, okay. Again, we're not trying to. You can come up here with a mask on, like the mask singer, if you want to. <laughs> I, I, I ain't trying to cover up nothing. But, look, but, but listen to me, Tell man. Check your schedule, morning, okay? Just check your schedule, brother, if you can. Uh, just, you know, just, let us know, man. I just told you I got warrants. Could you get off my back, okay? I got some warrants, all right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we got you. All right, we got you. All right, then. I'm back on child support. I'm behind on child support in six states. And quit using my real name. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, but we should. But all seriousness, we that that is if you use the information, if we use the inv- information that's available to us for free at an early age for the better for the betterment of educating our children, when they actually have money to spend, they'll know where to spend it as opposed to spending it someplace else where it's not going to come back to them. But you have to start talking with th- with them, not just to them, about the things that are available to to them for free, and starting right. at the bank. Is a good place because the bank will tell you. Oh, okay, what well, man? Thanks for calling Appreciate in, you, brother, uh, Eric. brother Eric. Man, and uh, we'll definitely, uh, uh, as they say back in the day, catch you on the rebound. I'll be around. <laughs> yes, <I'll> sir. Be <laughs> around. <laughs> All right, brother. Um, so I mean, well, <laughs> I got, I got, I got a question I want to ask y'all. Go ahead. And it, really, has the black church? See, let, 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 let me let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, Has the black I was church. trying to stay away yeah, 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 I'm just saying. from the talk about the church. No. Has the black church in any way contribute to the lack of education on the keeping down of us in poverty in any kind of way? 
Yes and no. Because he's talking about free information. Wouldn't it wouldn't it been a good asset to have had? And I'm sure back in the day, in the 20s and the 1800s, that this is where they gathered, beginning to brainstorm for black uh, uh, liberation. Black on um, Wall Street. Yeah. It had to. They had to have a meeting place somewhere. So, shouldn't this information be taught if they couldn't get it in the school? Shouldn't it be some kind of place inside the house to disseminate that type of information to help build? Because that was supposed to be the center of our community, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, and, now, yes. Now yes. You're, and no. you're assuming that somebody in the black church n- knew something about how to educate you in finances. Well, so I how mean, can we assume that? Somebody in that church actually knew but, how to do it. Because the church still has to run because you still church still got to pay bills, too. I'm pretty sure it was some people that was in Black Wall Street. I'm pretty sure it had a, a church in Tulsa, a black church in that neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I'm pretty sure that there was there was some black leaders who were wealthy in Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, that's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But right. I, that's not saying nationwide. No, no, right, person. right, right. But but, but, I, but what he's saying is he's talking about not just in Tulsa. But over the landscape of America. Because there are many churches in our communities. Okay, stop right there. Now I'm going to add, I'm gonna let Rick answer that. Uh-oh. I already know. Go, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. I was trying to say. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I was trying to stay out Hey, man. You, I, start, you try. You start in the case. Go, go ahead, you, Rick. <laughs> Nowadays, I, I, I'm not gonna speak because I definitely agree with what, what's your name, Deacon Phillips. Deacon, Deacon Phillips. Phillips. I, 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 See, I, I'm not here that much, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I definitely agree with because to me, a lot of the churches back in the day was your neighborhood, homegrown, homegrown pastor church. He ain't got nothing. Ain't nobody in the church got nothing. So it's hard to get something from nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's move forward. <laughs> uh-huh. To your local brethren. <laughs> in the modern era? In the modern, in the modern era. era. Okay. You're talking about on Old National Boulevard. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. That one too. Mm-hmm. And, and then that one over yonder. And then this one back down the street. Mm-hmm. There should be. They should be having classes. Now, I know a young lady who is the minister of finance at her church. And her job is to help with financial literacy in her church. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there should be mm-hmm. at every church. Yeah. At every yeah. church, if you want your people to prosper, mm-hmm. there should be someone there that can guide and help you change that entire mindset. Because believe it or not, it is in the book. Yeah, but but here now check this but, out. Go now ahead. if you have that class and and of People ain't showing I up would for the class. I would definitely go now, there. Now, if you ain't now, showing was, up for the class, then we had, had a class. class. We had a class, and the class was, it calls to go to the class. It's, it's, a, it's a program that's called Crown Ministries, and they teach managing money from a biblical perspective. My wife and I, we actually did go through that class. It calls to get the, the, the books and the materials, but we actually went through that class and learned a lot. And I, I would love to see, I don't know if it's available in different ministries, but it should be because a lot of people don't know, but it is, it is biblic- biblically based on how to handle finances. I, 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 but okay, see, let me ask but, you. Okay, let me ask you this then. I'm a heathen. I'm scared uh-huh. of the Bible. I'm scared of God. People. I'm scared of all that because everything I've seen come out this church ain't nothing. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Why would me as an outsider want to come to a biblical class because it's teaching see, finance that, that, biblically? That's what I see. Changing that's the what, mindset. No, but no, no. See, I that's get the whole thing with changing. I want, I want my mindset to change. I want to find a class, but you don't trust it from the church. I don't no, trust no, no. But, but no. Here's what he's saying. I, if I'm, if I'm mistaken, um, Rick, correct me on this. You're not saying you won't come to the church to take the class. You're saying that you don't trust the Bible, right? If a, if you're a heathen, you don't trust the Bible. So why would you take a class that's that has the foundation? Based on using scripture and passages out of the Bible, right? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. But you'll come to the class if, 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 if it's being if, taught if, at if, the church. If, if, if I'm poor and I'm looking for a way to get, and if it, and it, this church, because there's a lot of programs that the church have, have had in the community, but they're not, they are, but they're not. 
they we know that they're biblically drawn, but they're not driven by the Bible. Hmm. Sometimes you got to get them in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. To me, sometimes you got to yeah. get them in. Yeah. So, but if I'm, but if I see, if I know Pastor So and So sleep with my auntie. <laughs> that yeah. different. Oh, yeah, that without different. question. You know what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Why I ain't gonna listen to him? If I know Pastor So and so sleeping with my auntie, why am I gonna come to his biblical money class? Hmm. That's true. Well, Jesus did say the poor you have you always, right? He <laughs> just didn't necessarily say it had to be me. Right. Now sometimes maybe you got just gotta be desperate enough, be like, I know he doing whatever on the outside, but I've been broke too long and hey, I, I'm gonna eat the meat and spit out the bones, but I, I gotta Make a change some kind of way. Right. I, I think I think I think practically I, I, I think before we can even get to the spiritual mm-hmm. aspect of it, like, right? Practically people, whether they are atheists or whether they are believers, mm-hmm. right? Practically people make bad decisions. Amen. Like right. like liter- like literally bad decisions. Okay, caller, caller, we calling in. What's your name? Where you calling from? I just want to say this real quick. Who is this? This is Eric again. No, hang up. We ain't talking to Eric. (laughs) Eric Eric got to come back up to the radio. He got to come up here to the show. Go ahead, Eric. Historically, it was the black church that taught financial literacy, and they taught it correctly. That's right. For our people. That's that's the truth. And they still teach it abundantly correctly. But there's a lot of flexibility to what qualifies as Christianity now, so a lot of folks Mm -hmm. fall into wrong, wrong slots. But right. if y'all bring this topic up again, I'd like y'all to look at the Georgia Department of Education's website mm-hmm. and look at where they rank themselves as far as preparing people for career in secondary school once mm-hmm. they leave the public school system. Okay. And this would be a good topic for you to talk about then because you'll see where the school has a part in this problem too, mm-hmm. but mainly the parents. Right. All right, I'll go back to listening. Just, <laughs> un- just understand, Eric, we, we, we come out of Christendom. Just thought I'd put that out there. Yep. But but no, I mean people make practical like just bad decisions. Period. Like for me, I want to reach a person before starting with the understanding of debt. Because again, as brother Eric said, it's not a black problem, it's not a mm-hmm. white problem. We're focusing on our community, mm-hmm. but people across the board have made bad, bad decisions, decisions, right? Using your decision is and, based on what you and, know, though, right? Or, right. or based on what you don't know. Well, not I mean based on what you don't know. Like people, like if you don't respect money. Like people don't respect money mm-hmm. because if you respect money, you you don't spend money frivolously. Yeah, right. Like people, you see you see people all the time. We know we got cousins that I see it all take their check and will go to a concert or go to a club or go to whatever, knowing they gotta pay, pay their, their bills, bills, pay their rent, and they light bill and everything, and they go buy. For example, you paying for uh, you paying two hundred and fifty dollars for a pair of tennis shoes, like knowing that mm. now, now your children. Right? Uh-oh. Your children, you're supposed to be trying to pr- to prepare mm-hmm. a better way for your children. We're not even getting into the biblical aspect mm-hmm. of it. Just the practical aspect of it that people practically leave debt to their children yeah. just because they want to live for now. And I think that's the yeah. difference between a lot of other cultures. They ball out later on. Mm-hmm. So you'll see some of this, you know, some of the old white, you know, communities of people. They going on their vacations at 60. 60. Mm-hmm. That's, when they, That's when they start living, right? Between the time they get married from 20-something years old all the way to about 50, they're preparing to pay their house off and build up a college fund for their kid, right? Mm-hmm. So that way when their kid go to college, they don't have to pay no yep. no 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 um uh, pay for college tuition. They don't have no house, no 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 home uh um um uh, debt, no note, uh, note anything like that. And when they become sixty, they're driving from Canada to Miami mm-hmm. with no worries, six mm-hmm. months at the whole year, because mm-hmm. I think the mindset of it changed. Now, is there to say that there's no black people that have this mindset? Yes, mm-hmm. there are some people that black people, but at the same time, the majority of us we 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 think that that sports. Is the only way to get us out of being in poverty. Man, but that's what these are the things. These are the things we've been yeah. taught, and it's a mindset. Our minds are being conditioned in that state of poverty. And it, for me, it was so much. I was tired of struggling. It's a difference between struggling and living. It's a real big difference than being able to pay your bills and struggling to pay your bills. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I got tired of the point where I'm struggling to pay my bills. Now, I ain't rich by far. And I don't, dec- I don't want to be rich. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I, won't, I would want to have wealth, but I wouldn't want to be rich because it's hard for a rich man to enter in. Nah, but that's biblical, though. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with having no bread, though. Yeah, I, I, I said well. Ain't nothing wrong with having no bread. Ain't never, I, I get it. I, I, I get it. <laughs> Yeshua sure always had somebody with some money around him. Yeah, he already had, so, he he had somebody that was around him. Bread. That's, the, that's the key. So, or you said something good there. Somewhere, somebody around him had some money. How many of us have family members that necessarily had something that was around us that could teach us to help us out, even 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 in our immediate family and then in our community? Right. I can't I can't I can't receive from you to help me out because I'm already looking at you either eye because you got a little bit more than I got, but both of us still living in the project. Well, that that's because again, it's layers to what we're dealing with us as a people. It's layers. It, it, it and, we don't. Here's the thing: we don't respect money, nor do we trust each other. Hmm. This has not been a mindset that has been across the board for a long time. Right. At one point in time, we had when before there was integration, mm-hmm. we Talk. had no choice but to trust each other. He, he said it. Exactly. Ain't had no choice. Straight up. Yeah. Exactly. Straight up. That's what it was, and it did not matter. It wasn't about no denomination. It wasn't. Inter- yep. it, at the end of the day, we, we go back and watch the Malcolm X movie, mm-hmm. right? That Spike Lee did with Denzel watched a great movie. He should have won an Oscar for it that. Should have. Should when the have. situation with Brother Johnson got beat down, he was at the police mm-hmm. station. Brother Johnson was not even a Muslim. That's right. But we brothers of Brother Johnson. That, that's what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. So the <laughs> mindset right. of this, my brother, it didn't matter about whether you Christian, whether you brew, whether you none of that. Because if it affected you, mm-hmm. like right now, right, all the Hades we catching, right. I have yet to see in any of these videos anybody ask them, hey, are you a Hebrew Israelite? Mm-hmm. Are you a Christian? Mm-hmm. Are you an atheist? That's you- right. Oh, the common denominator across the board is you You're black. black. Right? We could deal with the other stuff later. When it came down to dealing with dealing at the table, when you saw that, that picture, and I talk about this picture all the time, one of the most powerful pictures I've seen with Jim Brown, mm-hmm. Kareem, and all mm-hmm. them sitting down mm-hmm. together. They, all them brothers didn't even believe the same thing. That's right. But you know what they had in common? You, you black. black. And if it and happened to me, money. yeah, yeah, they all had <laughs> okay, money. If money. it happened to me, it's going to happen to you. That's why I was about to bring this point up. When you look at that picture, you look at people that were in different fields, but they were so, they were quote unquote leaders in different fields. Yeah. How, right. How, how does that affect us now? If I if I can't see it on a lower level, how, I mean, how can I how can I teach you on a lower level if I'm if I'm looking at the leaders if they're not coming together to disseminate this type of information? Right. If they're not doing it on a bigger scale, if if I'm I'm not talking about these people, y'all, but if Tyler Perry and all these baseball players and movie stars aren't coming together and sitting down and talking to find a viable plan for us to build community with us, how can I come and ask somebody that's on a lower level? Because, because it don't start with them. Okay. It don't start with them. It's more of us than it is them. It's more small churches mm-hmm. than it is mega churches. Listen. Mm-hmm. But the but the small church's mindset is, I want to be mega, so I'm only going to build with the mega, mega. church, right? Ooh. Which they ain't stunting you half the time. All right. But if you take, you got 30 small churches mm-hmm. with 30 doggone people, right, in each one of these, these congregations, and you got one mega church with 500 members, you as 30 small churches with 30 members can be way more powerful mm-hmm. in what you're trying to accomplish than trying to go after one big fish. The mm-hmm. mindset and the layers that we have as a people is so crazy. We have to actually just start from the practical aspect of things mm. because if, when it comes to the spiritual conversation, we're going to argue about that. that. So let's deal with the practical first. Okay, hey, brother, do you have to buy a state? Do you have to buy the state? Or no, I just want the state. Well, don't do you have to buy the state? Mm. Or can you buy a hamburger? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, we have to unlearn so much. Hmm. We have to unlearn so much. And just... I remember growing up, um, I remember when I first moved to Atlanta, <clears throat> I used to live off Delt Road mm-hmm. and um, in an apartment complex off Delt Road. And um, there was a uh, um, Mexican family. And I watched them because I had to go past them everything. Mm-hmm. In the morning, 
there was a different set of people at this one apartment. Mm -hmm. You come back in the afternoon, there's a different set of people at this apartment. You come back late at night, there's a different set of people in this mm -hmm. apartment. And I figured out they were sleeping in shifts. Wow. And they worked in <laughs> shifts. Wow. Mm -hmm. Families. So, wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, families. In, 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 in the one three, four bedroom apartment, and the ladies of the family, they, they, they took care of the house, took care of the kids, but, you know, they went out and worked. And then all of a sudden you seen eventually start, um, they, um, one family moved out. Yep. Another family moved out and they, and they kept it going. They kept it going and they kept it going. And, and, and I, and I thought to myself, could we actually do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We started that. With the right mindset. We with the right, right mindset. Yep. We got to unlearn all this mess that we got in our heads right now. We have been, we, we have learned so much trash. Mm. So we have to unlearn some of this mess. We have to see what we can just the, just the basic stuff. I mean, the, the, we have to start with the kids. E mm -hmm. Even if even if I ain't got it, show that there's ways we can show them how to get there. Mm -hmm. Because we all got the question. If everybody in the project want to know how to get out, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody. yeah. At, at least from my generation. Yeah, that's true. This is this a whole other generation we in now. A lot of them trying to get it to the project, but my whole generation was trying to figure out how how we were gonna get the hell up out of there. Mm -hmm. So we had we got the right questions sometimes, but what we have to do is sometimes we have to be open to receive the answers. Yeah, being still is one of the probably the most hmm. beautiful things that I'm still trying to learn. I want to know how to be still so I can receive these answers. Yeah, and that's from practical, biblical, spiritual. <laughs> yeah. Every way, every which way possible, but you got to learn how to be still at some time. Right, that's and I good. think that's one of yeah. the hardest things for, especially men, black men, men too. Po the, the 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 one thing I've noticed the poor man has in 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 in, in common is we sh we all in a rat race looking at how to get out and take care of our family. Mm -hmm. But we at one some point we got to learn how to be still. Mm. And, and receive it. Yeah. But I don't know how. I, boy, I wish I would have known about the goodwill when I was in high school and coming up. No, it, I knew about the goodwill. Yeah, I but, knew about but, goodwill, but the Salvation good, but, Army. But the thing was, the goodwill, was the mindset of the goodwill ain't like it is now. I really understand. Back then, it was like, oh, man, you got them got clothes from the goodwill. Everybody was joining you or ranking on you about, you. oh, yeah, your mama got them shoes from mm -hmm. the goodwill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or now, K, K Mark or Kessler's. Now I can go to the Goodwill. Hey, man, where you got that shirt from? Yeah, Goodwill. Goodwill. What they got that at the Goodwill like that, boy? So <laughs> that that, that see, I set you up. So that's what I'm saying. How much did society and that outside noise my wife talked about? How much of that noise we hearing that exactly. keeps our mind conditioned? Dude, I see it all day long. I work at a place. I see somebody coming in there with a car that's worth three thousand dollars and put eight thousand dollars worth worth of stuff inside their car, Good. and the car itself ain't worth but three thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's a condition of the mindset. It's, it's a, I mean, I thank God because you keeping, you know, my lights on. But it is a condition of the mindset. See, it's that media and, and also uh, what Rick is saying about we want the instant gratification. We want to sit down and, as Moray uh, Brown would say, is trust the process on how to build money and build wealth. We're looking at people on the TV and magazines in sports and entertainment, and they got, uh, you know, whatever they got, the Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and they got these uh, shoes on and everything that we want that we're going to run over everybody as soon as the store open up. We're going to trample people over to get them $200 Jordans or whatever rather than going to the Goodwill, just having some shoes on and building that wealth and then having it like that. We're looking for that instant gratification. You know something? You want a flash. Years ago, my mm -hmm. aunt showed me a man. This was, it had my aunt, Auntie Ann. She was alive. She had, I was with her. I, I, I was in, had to be a teenager. We was at the liquor store on, on Camerton Road. She went and bought, bought her little stuff. And um, there was an old man out there. He looked like he was the biggest, I mean, dirtiest, smelliest bum in the world. She said, you know that man owned all this stuff right here, don't you? You wouldn't have known it if you would have looked at him. Most people that are wealthy and rich, oh, yeah. you wouldn't know it because they don't. They don't, they don't put it all on themselves to say, look at me, I got. That's right. They address in some old flip-flops, in an old T-shirt, and then I jump out of a Ferrari. Yeah, I, I, I had a, an attorney um, 
that worked in, um, a while back. It was in um, his office was over near Cumberland. What what's the area over there? Begin with, is it, uh, 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 begin with a pop, v, v? Uh, Zion, Vinings. 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 Yeah. Vinings. Mm -hmm. His building was in Vinings. His office still there. Mm -hmm. And man, I was I would go to when I, every time I went to his office. Now his I mean you walk in his office, marble everywhere. Dude got bread, right? Mm -hmm. But when you sat down and met with him, you 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 like this cannot be the guy <laughs> that um, yo the man had on. I mean, pant he had khaki pants, they wrinkled shoes, just don't even look collar up, one collar up, just <laughs> hair fold to the side. I'm like, man, come on, man, like. But at the same time, it's that mentality, that mindset of I don't have to flash for you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying he dressed like that when he go to, to court or anything like exactly. that. But I'm just saying, that's the way he presented himself. It's like the same thing with Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. It's the same. This dude is a billionaire, and he still yeah. stay in the same house. That's right. And he don't have no he don't have no yachts, no jets. He just, he like, yo, if I want to enjoy it, I just go call my friends and use theirs. But I'm on the bus, though, and I got $300 <laughs> wow. LeBron James on. Oh, I got $200 man. True True Religion jeans on, an $80 hat. And fifteen hundred dollar worth of tattoos, but I'm still on the bus. You see, a lot of and lot renting. Of, it's all it's all mindset. Um, <laughs> a lot of mama. us were taught that, that that things equate having stuff is wealth. Flash equals wealth, but it doesn't. It's perception. It's, it's a it's a mindset. It's a it's a mindset that we have to figure out how to be change that mindset. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's true, man. Well, we're about, uh, what we got, about seven minutes, uh, seven minutes before the hour. Uh, definitely, if anybody want to call in and get it in and, you know, share your thoughts, 404-355-8699. We have time for one more call of 404-355-8699. Give us a call, call in. And uh, we're talking about the poverty mindset. How do we change uh, the mindset of, of our people and, and really just, understand man that we have to learn how to respect money it's just like a long time ago you know uh, my pop when he bought me my first motorcycle he bought me a yamaha r1 Ooh. and um he was like listen son if you if you, you can ride this bike with respect but mm -hmm. the day you lose respect for it it'll kill it'll you kill you and that's kind of that's the same mentality we take with dealing with money mm -hmm. if you lose respect for money money will kill you Money will put you in a spiritual uh, casket, <laughs> or money will put you in a practical and casket. And a literal casket, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had some Rick? <laughs> yeah, more Rick. You're, you are a leader, mm -hmm. a pastor of a church. How do you take it, give it to your community, your church? How do you talk to them about money? Well, we always talk about this, man. I'm always, even in the, in the pulpit, I'm always talking about just just the practical things. I always, I'm always talking practically because the spiritual, the spiritual concepts of things is if people don't understand the practical aspect of it, they're not going to understand mm -hmm. the spiritual aspect of it. And I'm always talking about, hey man, you know, if you don't have to buy it, don't buy it. Don't buy it because mm -hmm. you want, want it. it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm always looking, hey man, listen, you know, there are some seasons where it requires you to uh, practice delayed gratification or not mm -hmm. spending, you know what I'm saying? Or or you want to go on a trip, but you can't. I'm always talking about, hey, plan ahead of time. If you want to go on a trip a year from now, save up the money. Mm -hmm. You know, put the money to the side to do that. Um, if you don't have to go nowhere, don't go. Like, it's certain things that you can do, and you pay off one bill. You know, get together. You ain't sit down with you and your wife. Come up with a plan. Sit down. Look at your bills. Look at your look at the things that you have, and tackle each thing at a time. Once you tackle those each things at a time, don't get back to that place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what got you in that, that position in right. the first place. So don't go frivolously doing stuff. You know when it comes down to it. you're trying to buy a house. If you're planning to buy a house one day, all the money that you spend on shoes, clothes, and all this other stuff, that money could be put to a side and saved so you can move into a house. And you don't have to worry about paying it. Me, bro, I never thought the day would come where I would rock a pair of Walmart shoes. All right. I never thought that. But now, it's, I learned it's not how now, much you spend, it's how good you make it look. 
But mm-hmm. you had to, you had to coordinate, coordinate, you you had to coordinate that thing, but like my John Witherspoon said, you got to coordinate that thing. Right. So that, that that's my mentality. That, and, and it's not like we just sit down and have class. It's just a conversation that's yeah. always being had, you know, just to make sure you're responsible. You, you and know what another like big that. point is? You you have to bring out two more. And like the three of us, we married. We've been married for a while. Yeah. We, we, we ain't trying to impress nobody. It's, yeah. it's different when you single, Rick. I'm just saying. My, my, hey, my wife's so stingy with some money. Shh, man. Hey. Mary ain't got nothing to do with it. My wife just stingy. I'm the, I'm okay. the stingy one. And I'm, I'm between right. me. I'm, I'm more stingy. I'm than still my learning wife. how to not go to Goodwill. I'm the penny pincher. I'm going over there when I leave him. I, but, hey, 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 but as far as money, don't go out to eat every day. When you know you hardly got some money, Come you better sit in the saying. kitchen, Talk, buy man. some groceries, Come on now. and learn how to cook. Go on YouTube, figure out how That's to cook right. some meals. The, yeah, save bro, some and, money. And, and here's another, here's another thing. Here's a big one. This is the biggest debt. If you don't respect it, this is the biggest debt that will keep you with a in a impoverished mindset and physically in poverty. Credit cards. Oh, we we'll tell y'all straight up. They, now, they the devil. That's straight devil. I own one credit card. One person, and that's just for renting cars and just to make sure that, you know, my credit, try to keep my credit going. Bro, man, credit cards, they man. will put your behind in a position of being a dog on Linda, as the Bible talk it's about. lust demon. Boy, that <laughs> okay. thing. Oh, I can swipe it. I ain't got to pay it right now. Uh-huh. And you don't respect the card. Listen here. And you swipe it, swipe it. Next thing you know, you got to, you swipe, you, they start you out with a, with a $200 limit. Uh-huh. Next thing you pay that off. Hey, girl, they come hitting you back. Oh, seven fifty. We, we want to increase that seven fifty. <laughs> then seven fifty come. Next thing you know, they're like, "Well, we're gonna give you a five thousand dollars." You think five thousand dollars? You swipe, swipe, swipe. Not knowing that when that interest kick in, mm-hmm. it's gonna be the same five thousand that you spent. It's gonna be another five thousand on, on top, top of that. that. That's right. <laughs> and if you can't pay your bill, don't buy it. Don't get that American Express because no, that they, you, dude. But you ain't gonna get that no way. <laughs> you, you know, you, if you if you heard you ain't gonna get that America, they gonna want theirs at the end of the month. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much how it is, Rick, man. You know, um, but I do believe that we should definitely have classes uh on that. But I think it should also be from a just a practical position. And then if you want to get it to biblical principles, I think you could you could shuffle some in there. But most people, if you don't know them, mm-hmm. if you don't know them, if it's just some strange people, you always want to make sure that that you're reaching everybody. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So go ahead, go ahead, Rick, give out your information, man. We're gonna get on out of here. Hey, it's your boy Rick Kane. Of talking around the mission, we can find me every Friday night. With the exception of last night, I had to take a mental break. <laughs> um, from eight thirty to ten on Love, I'm not Love on the Rio eleven hundred. It's talking random ish, not to but some good old fashioned barbershop style conversation. That's what's up. That's what's up. Go ahead, Casey. What you got? I ain't really got nothing going on. Y'all stay tuned. Got some more music coming down the pipeline soon. Been taking a break. Revan is making a comeback too. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be on the lookout right. for Rev. Dr. Bishop. That's what's up, man. I'm, I'm about to get in the studio and work on okay. something. Okay, go ahead too, and shout man, out so. that new thing, too. Don't You ain't going to leave I you out behind. Oh, so you going to leave that like that, like that, that? What? Uh huh. What's going on with you, Moray? Hey, man, big shout out to man. You know what I'm saying? One Messiah Clothing. Uh, yeah, definitely check about. us out. You can hit us up on sd.com forward slash One Messiah Clothing. And before we go, go check out my Moray Derek Silent Kingdom Anointing Custom Network. Check right. him out on Facebook, baby. All right, shout out to Deacon Phillip for following through today, man. Hallelujah. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Here comes the...